well told. I'd have been round there in under 80. Rubbish, Doctor. The first time you go round, Molly, in an under 80, I'll buy everyone in the club a treble scotch. Cheers. Well, much as it goes against the grain for a man in my profession to say it, your good health. Yes, sir. Haddock! Haddock, my dear fella. Hello, Colonel. <laughs> Haddock, how nice to see you. How are you, Doctor? Ah, still fiddling the scorecard as efficiently as ever, eh? <laughs> Come and have a drink. Well, I must say, you're, you remain remarkably faithful to Mully, and you've been coming here every year now for... Uh, how long ago? Since 1932. Never think of going anywhere else? Oh, no, no. You see, there's no other golf course that I've ever played on that has anything like, uh, well, you know. The Twelfth. The Twelfth, yes. The dreaded Grimble's Gulch. <laughs> you know, that hole has an awful fascination for me, like a boa constrictor. It's quite remarkable, really, you know. I mean, what is it? It's only 160 yards long. It's that blasted crevasse just luring you into temptation. Yes, one would think it would be easy enough to drive to the left and to avoid temptation, but no. Hey, do you know there used to be tin or copper mines in the area? I think perhaps it's something magnetic. Hello, Mr. Haddock. <laughs> ah, hello, MacPherson. Now, you heed what I'm going to tell you this year. Take a number five iron to yon twelfth and dinner bother about a wood. Well, I haven't got a number five iron. Or a four, or a three, or a two, for that matter. <laughs> now, what will you take? I might as well try my putter, I suppose. What? Oh, well, I, well I'll, I'll ha thank you. I'll have a, a dry sherry, if I may. A dry sherry, please, Mac, and two large pinks. Right away, Colonel. Well, anything new? What's been happening? Well, we've got a new tenant up at the big house, some stipendary magistrate down from London. Or he's just here for holidays and the weekends. Sometimes he sits on the bench when one of our JPs has a hangover. It's a dead loss, really. He's as fit as a fiddle. Doesn't even play golf. Of course, we've still got Mrs. Westmacott. Oh, yeah. she's a tiresome woman. Always getting up things. Yeah. Getting up things? <laughs> yes, last month in the Memorial Hall, she produced the local amateurs and the rape of Lucrece. <laughs> Any good? Very disappointing. If she was raped, it must have happened when I dozed off. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mac. Oh, we got a new vicar. Splendid chap. Ten minute sermons and benediction pronounced bang on opening time. Good morning, gentlemen. Ah, oh, vicar, talk of the devil. Well, that might have been better for us. <laughs> Haddock, meet the vicar. Well, how do you, how do, you do, do, Mr. Haddock? Haddock is one of our hardy annuals. Yeah, now what about you two fellas making up a four with us? Oh, splendid. You know, I can't wait to get it. The twelfth. Be careful. Oh, I should have had a six, anyway. A seven. Six. Seven. Six. I was four out of the rough. You were so deep in the rough, it would have taken a Geiger counter to keep check on you. Sure. <laughs> you staying long, Mr. Haddock? Well, that depends. On the weather? No, no, of this hole. You see, Vicar, this hole is beginning to get me down. Last year, on the uh, final day of my holiday, having seen my fifth and last ball go plummeting into the gulch, it was a comparatively new ball, by the way. I, I'd only been using it for about three weeks. I used obscene language to a perfectly innocent bystander. Really? Your Honor, Vicar. If one can say that with one less than a bishop. <laughs> Good shot. Oh, sorry, Vicar. A shade too much to the right, really. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. All yours, Doc. Now, all together. Oh, oh for a muse of fire! Not bad. We'll share them, Haddock. to be here over the weekend, Mr. Haddock, you might possibly read the lesson for us on Sunday. Be another old chap. I was about to do so. The holy time is quiet as a nun. Breathless. <laughs> I apologize for that, Vicar. I shouldn't have said that. It um, slipped out. That's quite understandable. It would be naturally the first lesson from the Old Testament. 
Grab another old chap unless you want to pick up. I don't want to do anything except get across that blasted canyon. Well, this is my last ball. You will observe, gentlemen, that this is virginal. Now, I think I ought to warn you, you particularly, Vicar, that if old Nick Grimble gets this one, I won't be responsible for my actions. Where's my nipple? Where are you going? I'm going to climb down that gulch and hit the blasted ball back up. Oh, hang on, you can't do that. That's a local rule. Any ball going down Grimble's gulch must be deemed lost. Then Grimble's gulch. No Grimble is going to get the better of me. Mr. Haddock, it's only a game. It is not only a game. <laughs> if you want me to read the lesson on Sunday, I will gladly do so. From the second book of Kings. And his driving is like the driving of Jehu, son of Nimshi. For he drives furiously. Just give me all the time. That's fine. I'm a deeper give you a Watch out, game. Of all the stupid that ever existed, the that invented this game took the biscuit. What the am I doing down this gulch trying to hit a ball up a cliff with a golf club? Of all the pastimes for a man, golf is the most, most, most that was ever well invented. You pay five as a result of a most shattering experience on the beach this afternoon, I have been subjected to very grave moral danger. Moral danger? On the beach? You don't mean you've been... No, 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 no. <laughs> a golfer, his name is Haddock. He's not, I'm glad to say, a resident. While trying to hit his ball out of Grimble's Gulch, let forth a stream of the most foul and obscene language. Language which until this afternoon I never suspected even existed. Really? If you didn't know it existed, how did you know it was obscene? <laughs> That's a good point, Doctor. The point, Colonel Hutchinson, is what are you going to do about it? Do about it? Nothing. Nothing? Well, if you refuse to take action in this matter, I shall have to do so myself. I shall go now to the police station to lay a charge against this man, and if the police refuse to bring an action against him, I shall... Charge? Good grief, woman, what are you talking about? What charge could you possibly bring? Profanity! And I shall get the best you see in London to make sure the charge sticks. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mrs. Westmacott. If you're going to start bringing charges against any golfer who happens to come out with a four-letter word, well, that'll be the end of golf. That, uh, Dr. Rudge, in my view, would not be a national catastrophe. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Here, listen, she's not joining the club, is she? She is, <laughs> she is not, man. Oh, thank God for that, because if she's joining, I'm leaving. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, she won't sue. Yeah, she won't sue. Once she simmers down, she'll realize she'll only be making a fool of herself. Now, of course she won't sue. <laughs> You know, it's uh, really very good of you to elect me as your chairman. But there's one thing I'd like to make perfectly clear. Although I happen to be a metropolitan magistrate, while I sit on this bench with you, I'm just a simple justice of the peace, like yourselves. And my opinion and vote carry no more weight than do yours. Hmm? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Uh, yes, Mr. Townsend, uh, call the first case, will you? Wes McCott versus Haddock. What? Haddock? Haddock? Why, why, why do I know that name? Hmm? Haddock. Haddock? Sir Joshua? Oh, a humble provincial bench is indeed honored. You are here on some call célèbre, I assume. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, uh, where, where was the defendant, uh, Mr. Townsend? Call Albert Haddock. Haddock, Haddock. Why does that name ring a bell? 
<laughs> yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. The, uh, the negotiable cow case at Hammersmith. <laughs> well, I think you're going to find this very, very interesting. Well, Mr. Herrick, defending yourself? As best as a poor layman can, your worship. No, oh, excellent, excellent. In that case, Mr. Herrick, kindly avail yourself of the amenities of the court. And take your place at the council's bench, will you? <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Sir Joshua. Yes, sir. Now, you don't mean to tell me that you're in Mr. Haddock's case. Now, I am prosecuting, sir. Now, you know. <laughs> but didn't you prosecute Mr. Haddock in the case about the cow? Yeah, yeah. Quite so, sir. But I've not come all the way down here to reminisce about past cases. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 of course not. <laughs> no, I, I can understand that, Sir Joshua. Sorry. Uh, let the charge be read out to the defendant, will you? Albert Haddock, you are charged for that on the 26th of June last, you uttered profane or obscene language in a public place, namely Brimble's Gulch in the county of Cornwall, contrary to the Profane Oaths Act of 1745. Are you guilty? Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you say 1745? Yes, Your Worship. Uh, somebody's been digging back a bit into the statute book. <laughs> Why involve that on who oh, oh, I wonder? Uh, why not the usual town police clause is there? Well, I, I think you'll find, sir, that the plaintiff, Mrs. Westbrook, got legal advisers. They have a cogent enough reason, sir. Yes, 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 possibly, but what is it? Well, your worship is, of course, familiar with the uh, Pervenos Act of 1745. Uh, silly, Sir Joshua, you look perfectly well, I'm not. Well, I, <laughs> I have a copy here, your worship. Yeah. Uh, your worship will find it on page 998, uh, halfway down, in the right-hand side. <laughs> Good heavens, he's quite right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the Fairhouse Act of 1745 differs in one mark particular from the Town Police Clauses Act. Um, whereas the penalty under the Town Police Clauses Act is a fine for having cursed or sworn, uh, the penalty under the Buffet Nose Act of 1745 is a fine of five shillings for each and every curse uttered or sworn. Uh, now, uh, I should be bringing evidence to show that Mr. Haddock uttered a minimum of 200 curses. Now, uh, if you find to the plaintiff 200 fines at five shillings each, we'll be called for. Oh. <laughs> well, 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 well. How do you plead, Mr. Haddock? Guilty, Your Worship. Guilty? Yes, Your Worship. Utterly guilty. But Mr. Haddock, that means it's all over. <laughs> Can't I prevail on you to change your mind? Well, I, I wish you could, Your Worship, but I did it. Oh, as a gentleman, I have to admit it. I swore horribly, terribly, at least 200 times. Well, that's that then. I'm sorry to have raised your hopes. <laughs> well, since you have chosen to plead guilty, Mr. Herrick, it only remains for me. Uh, that is to say for us, uh, to, to pass judgment accordingly. Uh, with respect, Your Worship, there is a little bit more to it than that. Uh, is that? <laughs> uh, Sir Joshua, I, I know that you haven't finished opening yet, but do you mind if I ask Mr. Haddock what his point is? Your Honour, Your Worship, we have heard the prosecution say that I am liable to be fined at the rate of five shillings for every swear uttered. Mm -hmm. Now, with respect, I would like to refer, uh, Your Worship, uh, to the aforesaid Act of 1745. And you will find, in fact, that there is a scale of charges. You'll find it on the next page but one, at You're the right, top. Mm -hmm, Have you got it, Your Worship? Uh, Yes, 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 I've got it. Five shillings. Well, of course, five shillings in 1745. Uh, with would... respect, Your Worship, I haven't yet reached my point. Uh, good, good, good. <laughs> now, uh, if Your Worship will read on, you mm. will see that five shillings is the fine for those of the rank of gentlemen and above. Mm. But for those of lesser status, the fines go down. Uh, for instance, anyone under the degree of gentleman, the fine is only two shillings. And for ordinary day laborers, uh, soldiers, and seamen, 
The fine is only one shilling. Now, even though a fine, the maximum fine of five shillings, Mr. Herrick, uh, that won't exactly, won't exactly ruin you, will it? Ah, but uh, if I may once again refer your worship to the act, it is a fine of five shillings for each and every swear uttered. And there were at least two hundred, which means at least fifty pounds. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Haddock, but if the act says fifty pounds, then fifty pounds is uh, really... With respect, your worship, and this is the point I'm coming to. Uh? You see, it is fifty pounds for a gentleman. I could call you no less, Mr. Herrick. Oh, how kind of you, Your Worship. Uh, but I submit that for the purposes of this case, I am not a gentleman. Uh, Mr. Herrick, when the charge was read out to you, did you not say, I am guilty and I have to admit it? Did I? By Jove, I believe you. What, what a good memory you have got. Yes, Mr. Herrick, I have. Because I remember your exact words. You said, as a gentleman, I have to admit it. <laughs> anyway, that's the problem, Mr. Joshua. Was Mr. Herrick a gentleman or not at the time in question? Now, you say that he was a gentleman. And for the purposes of this case, yes. And for the purposes of this case, I suggest that you prove it. <laughs> and for the purposes of this case, I suggest that you prove that you're not. And for the very purpose that I'm standing well, there, uh, I don't uh, have uh, 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 Haven't we something to say about this? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, uh, yes. Yes. Well, I'll uh, hear all the evidence and say it afterwards. You have Sir Joshua kind to of call your evidence, will you? Excuse me one moment. Yes, yes, yes. Now, before the evidence is called, I should like to invite the bench, one of the class they may assign the defendant, to consider the circumstances in which these offences were committed. Now, I'm going to ask you to say that this is the worst case of its, of its kind that you have ever heard. Uh, by all means. This is, without doubt, the worst case of its kind that this bench has ever heard. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> You've never heard a previous case of this kind. <laughs> will you call, call your evidence? Uh, will you, uh, please, Mrs. Westmacott, will you go into the box? Now, uh, will you tell the bench exactly what happened on June the 26th? And uh, you may write down anything you wish. No. Uh, who said so? Oh. Uh, with the leave of the bench, Your Honour. Oh, thank you, Sir Joshua. <laughs> you know, we're all men and women of the world here. And Mrs. Westmacott is a justice of the peace to boot. Uh, you don't want to write anything down, do you, madam? Certainly not. Yeah. I shall call a something spade a something spade. <laughs> uh, uh, something spade. Uh, what thing, Mrs. Westmacott? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I was just... Uh, we haven't got to it yet. Uh, may I remind you, Mrs. Westmacott, that when you yourself have graced this bench, I have heard you more than once tell members of your own sex not to be bashful, but to speak up loud and plain. Yes, that is true. Now, pray continue. Now, what did happen, Mrs. Westmacott? I was on the beach with my poetry girls when this man came down into the gulch and started hitting out at his golf ball. <laughs> Suddenly I realized that he was using the most terrible language. He didn't seem to realize that we were there. The most hideous words were coming out. Ah, now we have come to it, Mrs. Weston. <coughs> what, what were the words he said? He said... <laughs> yes? He said... Well, now, come, 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 madam, don't you... Don't you be bashful. <laughs> I was wrong, I admit it. In the future, I'll let them write it down. Hey, give me a piece of paper and a pencil. Now I can't even spell that damn word. <laughs> I had no means of anticipating the bizarre turn that this case has taken, which was certainly not of, um, uh, well, uh, um, anyway, I do happen to have one witness who may be of some assistance at this court. Would you call Mrs. Philby Potter, please? <coughs> now, uh, would you describe your home as a boarding house, Mrs. Philby Potter? No, I would not describe my home as a boarding house. My home happens to be a little too large for me. I'm a widow, so I take in, I accept the occasional guest. Paying guest. Well, uh, uh, any old guest? No, I'm most particular. 
Clergy, of course, are always welcome. Professional men, school teachers, cinema managers, <laughs> politicians, as long as they're conservative. <laughs> I only accept a gentleman. Yes, and, and Mr. Haddock came into that category. Oh, yes, most certainly. He was always very polite, always said he was completely satisfied. And I really stayed with you on three separate annual holidays, didn't he? That is so. And on every occasion, acquitting himself in a gentlemanlike manner? Oh, definitely. Otherwise, I would have told him I was complete. that I had no accommodation in vacant. Oh, oh, yes, I guess I see, yes. Uh, now, I believe that your um, late husband was in the services, wasn't he? Yes, Indian Army Major. Of course, he retired early. Yes, and I believe you, you, you yourself, you take a great interest in uh, local affairs. Well, I think one has a certain obligation towards yes, one's yes, own... Yes, quite so, quite so, yes, yes. Uh, would you would like to tell the court about some of them? Well, if you insist. I do. Well, this year I'm secretary to the Primrose League branch. Yes, thank Last you. Last year I was... Thank here. you, Mrs. Philby Potter. Uh, Sir Joshua, I'm a little at a loss to understand the, uh, the trend of your line of questioning. Well, with respect, Your Honour, I was trying to show that the witness is uh, eminently qualified, both by her experience and her natural acumen, uh, <laughs> to distinguish a gentleman from, uh, well, uh, a non-gentleman. <laughs> I see. Well, I think the court has had ample opportunity of assessing your witness's credentials, Sir Joshua. Well, in that case, there are no further questions, sir. Uh, Mr. Heather, do you wish to cross-examine? If your worship pleases. Uh, Mrs. Philby Potter, now my learned friend here has uh, brought you forward as an expert witness on this vex question. Now, perhaps you would give us your expert definition of a gentleman? Well, I should say it was someone who behaves. I mean, in every contingency, he just behaves. Yes, I see. Perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps you could give us an example, could you? Well, to be quite frank, Mr. Haddock, I always had taken you to be a gentleman. You had taken... Ah, I, I notice, Mrs. Philby Potter, that you use the past tense. Does this mean that you no longer hold these views? No, I do not. And what suddenly made you change your mind? You know very well. Well, of course I know very well. But in court, you see, one has to go on repeating the same old thing over and over again. <laughs> now, what made you think that I had suddenly lost my gentlemanly status? Mrs. Westmacott and I had been personal friends for years. Naturally, she came to me before telling anyone else. When she told me what you'd done, Vulgarity. Oh, I abhor an in front of her poetry circle. Vile. Vile is too kind a word. Oh, and, and what steps did you take to rid your house of this vile person, uh, namely myself? I asked you to pack your bags and leave immediately. Yes, and now this is important, Mrs. Philby Potter. What were your parting words? Now, I should like you to try and remember exactly. I say, I'd rather not say. No, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, I'm afraid you've got to say, Mrs. Philby Butter. I said, I shall have to charge you for the full fortnight. No, 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 not that bit. <laughs> no, I, I mean later, when I was fumbling with the wretched latch on your front gate. What words did you shout after me? Oh, then, I said, as far as I'm concerned, you're no gentleman. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. <laughs> Re-examination. No, thank you, sir. And that completes my case. Yeah. In that case, Mr. Haddock, you may present your case, if you so desire. Yes, I, I am ready, Your Worship. I would like Dr. Rudge for a starter, please. Well, I suppose I've known you for about 12 years. Ever since you came down here for the golf, as a matter of fact. I treated you to the odd minor ailment. Now, Doctor, how would you describe my ordinary, everyday language? Courteous, slightly academic, moderate in the extreme. And yet, on the afternoon of June the 26th, even from the considerable distance of the cliff top, you could hear the language that I was using on the beach at Grimble's Gulch. Oh, I could hardly help it. Once you got into your stride, you were shouting at the top of your voice. You went quite berserk. Do you yourself swear, Doctor? Occasionally. 
moment I lose my patience, <laughs> you can spell that any way you want. <laughs> Doctor, the witticisms of that nature are expected to emanate from the bench. <laughs> not, not from the witness box. I'm sorry, Your Worship. No, 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 please don't apologize. I'm not upset, merely envious. <laughs> As a medical practitioner, doctor, have you any professional opinion or explanation as to my regrettable outburst? Oh, yes, I have. It's at home, the 12th. It's become quite a fixation with you. I have noticed this over the years. Yeah, doctor, would you describe Mr. Haddock as a gentleman before he reaches the 12th hole? Oh, well, quite well. And after the 12th hole? He's his normal self again. And at the 12th hole? Well, uh, a kind of schizophrenia takes hold of him. He's a different being altogether. Thank you, Doctor. But I still behave like a gentleman. You most certainly do not. Thank you, Dr. Rutch. <laughs> uh, Sir Joshua, any question? No, of course not. Uh, well, Mr. Haddock, that then is your argument, hmm? Yes, indeed it is, Your Worship. Uh, I hope that the evidence that you have heard will prove my contention that when I am playing golf at Grimble's Gulch, I am no gentleman. And I humbly submit that any fines which the Benz deems fit to impose should be at the cheap rate, <laughs> namely a barb a word. Thank you. Well, I suppose the time has now come for me. And it goes without saying, my colleagues in the, in the bench here, uh, to sum up the pros and cons of this uh, this very unusual case. Uh, the nub here, of course, is uh, temporary mental stress. Uh, exceptional circumstances may well break down the normal restraint of a civilized citizen. Uh, a man may, for example, uh, without warning, discover another man molesting his wife. Well, under such provocation, the law recognizes that a reasonable man may well cease to be, for the time being, a reasonable man. Now, can this be held to be true for a sorely tried golfer, who for several decades has been striving to get his ball over and not into Grimble's Gulch? Hmm? I, I think it can. <laughs> Yes, uh, we think you can. <laughs> uh, Mr. Haddock, in his skillful attempt to minimize the severity of possible punishment, has made much use of the word gentleman. Well, in my view, he need not have troubled. His provocation at that notorious twelfth hole was so exceptional that I cannot think it was contemplated by those who framed the uh, Profane Oaths Act of 1745. <laughs> So I find, and my colleagues on the bench are in full agreement, <laughs> uh, that the defendant at the time was not in law responsible for his action or his speech, and I am therefore unable to punish him in any way. No, he, he leaves this court without a stain on his character. But I would strongly recommend that either Mr. Hedder gives up the game of golf entirely, Oh, he confines his activities to courses where the more difficult hazards are beyond the range of impressionable ears. Hmm? <laughs> 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 partner, or an opponent, I miss Haddock. Me too. Well, we haven't lost him entirely. He may have given up playing golf, but he certainly remains faithful to Mullion. And as so often happens, when one of the sheep strays away from the flock, another one takes its place in the fold. Just look at her. <laughs> Lady, I tell the whole 